Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater Soundcheck. This time out, we're going to have a very special demo for you of a new feature in Pro Tools. Pro Tools 12.5 is just around the corner, and with that release, Avid will be unveiling their Avid Cloud Collaboration for Pro Tools. Now, this feature allows you to do long-distance collaborations with different people, to all work on the same song, to do it very transparently, and also to use many of those new features that have been introduced in Pro Tools 12.3 and 12.4, including track commit and track freeze as well. I think you're going to enjoy this demo. We've got Jeff and Gil from Avid. Jeff's here in our facility at Sweetwater in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Gil's down at his home in Florida, and the two of them will be creating a song together using Avid's cloud collaboration for Pro Tools. Hey, I'm Jeff Komar from Avid. I'm here to uh, take you through a tour of the upcoming cloud collaboration for Pro Tools. And uh, I'm collaborating today with my friend Gil Gowing, who is in Florida, um, here at, at Sweetwater in Indiana. So uh, we've got a project that we're going to work from. We've got some basic tracks. Let's just uh, take a quick listen to what we have here uh, so far. You get a rush from her eyes. You like feet in the fire. You made a gesture with the pump. Okay, so we've got some basic, some basic tracks uh, that we're going to start with, and really want to take this in a different direction. Want to bring some other players into the fold, um, and and add some electric guitar, add some bass, add some other parts. So the first thing we really want to do is to talk about how to collaborate uh, with another person with uh, Avid Cloud Collaboration. So what you're looking at right now is the dashboard. And this is where you're managing both local and cloud-based sessions. And we call a cloud-based session a project. And so um, the first thing I want to do is I want to actually go over um, to our chat window and go find somebody to work with. And uh, let's go see if Gil is available and around. Um, to work on some tracks. See if he's got some time to, to play some guitar tracks for us. Cool, sure, awesome. Um, how about uh, time to Skype? Great, okay, so let's Skype with Gil and uh, actually chat a little bit with him. Hey Gil, you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's going on? Awesome. Hey, well, I've got some tracks that uh, just kind of starting out with really pretty simple, some organ, some piano, female vocal, you know, pretty polite. I really want to kind of build it up and make it a little more interesting, more aggressive. And you're a killer guitar player. I'd love if you could put down a lead guitar part and some bass. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, I uh, would love to. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to basically, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add you to the project. So um, I've got this, uh, Kelly Malone is the artist, okay? So I'm going to come in here and just add you to our project, and you should see an invitation here in a second. Uh, yep, got it. I'm going to accept that. Awesome. Okay, so Gil's joined the project. Okay, very, very cool. So um, really quick, I'm going to just uh, tweak the drums a little bit and then quickly get you some stems um, of the drums, the bass, the, uh, the vox, and send them over and give it a go. All right, sounds good. I'll be uh, looking forward to, uh, for the tracks, and uh, I'll start getting some parts together. Awesome. Thanks, man. All right, thanks. Cool. So the first thing we want to do really is, is, is start to roll here and get our drums uh, printed. Now the drums that we're using for this particular track, we've actually got uh, Machina from Native Instruments just to kind of give us some basic, some fundamental loops to kind of start out the idea. So what we're going to do is, um, I don't know if Gil has Machina, so what I'd rather do is actually print this. And we're going to use a feature in Pro Tools 12 called Commit. And this is great. Basically it allows me to simply right click on the Machina track, say Commit, and it's going to render a new track. And in this case, I just want to render a selection of bars of that piece. I'm going to say hide and make it inactive. And um, I'm not even concerned about the volume or the pan automation. I'm actually just going to keep the stuff that's already on the track. It's going to make a new track for me. It's going to render all the audio. And now I have an actual drum loop that I can work with. I don't have to worry about dragging a big uh, machine project around, which is great. OK, so we've got some drum ideas there. Um, I also have some loops on the track below this, and I've kind of just played with some different permutations of loops and um, just kind of look at some different ideas of what we've got. I've also got a, a, a bass line, which is Loom, which is a, a, a simple um, virtual instrument as well. Um, so what I want to do really quickly is get some stems to Gill. And to do that, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to go and take a look at our submaster. So we've got a drums, bass, keys, and vocal submaster. And we're going to actually use 
a feature in Pro Tools called Freeze. So what I can do is I can just come in here and um, we're going to freeze these particular subs. And so what's happening is it's rendering all the audio that's feeding those buses and um, it's going to basically print a composite track. So it's, it's like an aux mixed with an audio track essentially. And you'll see that visually. And then I can enable these tracks for collaboration. I can share those with Gil so that he has access to um, all of my kind of starting ideas. Now I don't need to send him all my individual VIs, all my drums, all my you know, effects returns and everything. I can literally just send him some stems. And that's kind of what we're going to do. So there you can see the kind of the, the ghosted waveform in back of the, of the breakpoints. So for these stems, I'm going to come in here and we're going to click on the little track collaboration icon. And that is going to post those particular tracks up to the cloud. It actually is going to uh, compress them, losslessly encrypt them, send them up to the cloud. And you can see for a second there, my avatar was there showing that I am controlling the track. It's posted them and then it let go of those. I think our internet connection is so fast. Actually, you can see those transactions taking place right now, right? It's pushing all those individual tracks up to the cloud. I'm going to bring up the chat window so that we can actually just kind of give a, a notice to Gil that, you know what, everything is posted. Now I'm in the, the chat window and I'm working on the, um, the actual project, right? So anybody that belongs to the project is going to see something in this chat window. And so I just told Gil that those stems are up. He can actually start working, working on the guitar parts, right? Awesome. Okay. So while he's doing that, um, what I think we should do is take a look at some of the other parts, melodic parts that are in the track, including there's an organ part, which is just using DB33 right now. And um, it's pretty generic, you know, not terribly interesting. Um, so I thought we would actually take advantage of some of the plugins that are built into Pro Tools, um, things like EQ3, even some of the Air Effects, Vintage Filter, um, as well as some of the fantastic uh, signal processing plugins that come on the Avid All Access plan. So I've also got a plugin from uh, FabFilter called Saturn, and this is a really interesting multiband saturation plugin. So we can really kind of change the, the texture of this um, organ quite a bit here. Okay, so um, really starting to get an, a different idea of what's going on there. Now I'm actually going to unfreeze my submasters so I can actually start to work through those and listen through those. And um, if we just listen to our organ here, we've got a, a little bit of a different direction there now with, with some of those tracks, which is, which is really interesting. Um, now what I want to do is I want to... Um, uh, I'm going to bring in the machine track as well that we, we printed previously. And heck, let's actually just bring all our drums in so we can kind of hear where we're at so far before uh, we go and check in with Gil. So let's see. Okay, so we're really kind of starting to get a totally different direction. We got some percussion, we got some really some interesting textures with the organ there. Now, if we go back up to our um, our artist chat window, you can see Gil actually has indicated the bass and the guitar have been posted. Now, there's actually an indicator up here on the toolbar for collaboration tools that actually shows you a global send, a global receive, and then an indicator that you have new tracks available. Uh, so I'm just going to say cool. Thanks, and if I can type correctly, um, we're going to just go and click on the receive new tracks from Gail. And um, let's see what we get here. Okay, so it looks like we've got a bass part and we've got a main guitar as well. So let's just listen to the bass here for a second. Now you can see something here. The crosshatch pattern on the bass indicates that this is a frozen track. Now the cool thing about this is uh, that uh, he didn't know if I had 11MK2, which I can see is the plugin that he used to define this particular uh, uh, bass sound. And everything downstream, he did a, essentially a freeze up to this insert, is a built-in Pro Tools plugin, which is great. But if I want to tweak it, I can just unfreeze it and I can actually then get to, get to his particular amp and cabinet that he picked. Um, which, uh, let's just take a quick listen to that. And uh, maybe we'll listen to that in context with the synth bass as well. And I can then blend the two, kind of get an idea of how those blend together. Now, when I just made that tweak, 
you can actually see on the uh, track collaboration pane for the base that he sent me um, that it indicates that my avatar, JJ, has edited that and I have the option now to manually send that change, which was a balance change on the volume for that track. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say I like that particular balance now. I'm going to do a little send on the bass and um, it's going to then free up that track once it sends my changes to Gil. Let's actually check out the guitars that he sent us as well, also frozen. And then once again downstream, there's just some standard Pro Tools plugins uh, that, he, that he gave us. Now I can also see that he is using, um, uh, let's actually just take a look at, let's unfreeze the guitars and take a listen to these uh, real quick here. Um, and I can actually also see that he has done a very cool thing which is using uh, multiple cabinets, right? 11MK2 actually allows you to have multiple outputs and uh, let's see what he's got here for a sound. Very, very cool. I like what he's doing there. That is, that is nice. Um, okay, great. Well, I think that's, that's really coming together. Um, let's, uh, let's go back and check in with Gil. I've got an idea. I think we could do one more thing kind of at the intro section. Um, and let's go, uh, oh, you know what? Gil, actually, take a look at this. He's, got, he's doing some edits on the bass. If you take a look at the bass track, it's red. You can see Gil's avatar. Uh, I'm going to just say, oh, he's making changes right now to the base. I bet if we pop open the task window, we can actually see um, changes taking place. So Gil is um, posting some things. Now, I can see when somebody else is working on a track, I can go in and I can actually receive those changes um, that he's made. So check it out. I'm going to actually go and, and take a look at his, his edit. And it looks like he actually comped together some different bass parts. So um, very, very cool. Allows you to selectively choose the things you want to alter on the track and then send those to people that you're working on. Um, so let's check in back in with Gil. Um, uh, very cool. Got the changes. Would you be up for a, let's say, uh, maybe a solo part, guitar part for the intro? I think that would be kind of cool to, to add a little bit more texture just at the beginning of the piece. Sure, before the verse, yep. Intro of the tune. Thanks, cool. Okay, so he's gonna work on one more part. And uh, in the meantime, we can kinda, kinda move forward and, and work on some different tracks. Now, what I think I wanna do, kinda the last thing here is bring up the vocal. And obviously that's one of the most important parts of any track. Uh, let's just take a listen to uh, the vocal here real quick. You get a rush from her eyes. You like feet in the fire. Okay, so it's, it's very you polite. Um, you know, it's, it's okay. What I want to do is I want to take advantage of some of the plugins that come on the Avid Alexis plan. And there's some fantastic stuff in there, like we have an Echoplex. Um, which is a um, plug-in. Essentially, a lot of these algorithms came out of uh, the 11 rack. Uh, and uh, there's 17 killer plugins. They're all DSP. They run native, uh, as well as Studio Reverb. But I made a, a dirt chain, and using the Bucket Brigade uh, delay, as well as some uh, Black Op distortion, really kind of adding some texture to, to the vocal. So let's just take a quick listen to this here. You like feet in the fire. Okay, it's, we're almost there. I'm just gonna go to my mix bus and uh, just bring up a couple kind of final plugins that we've got on our two bus. And uh, those plugins that we're using, so on the, with Pro Tools HD12, it, on the all, Avid All Access plan, you have access to all of the Avid Pro Series plugins. Fantastic, Pro Compressor, Limiter, Expander, Pro Sub Harmonic. I'm using the Multiband Compressor as well as the Limiter to kind of really uh, balance out our track. So I think we're almost there. You get a rush from her eyes. You like feet in the fire. Okay, so we're just about there. You can actually take a look and see that there's new tracks available. Gil's been working on that solo part. So let's actually just go and grab it. I'm going to assume that it's already there. Lead in the intro's done, uploaded. Awesome. Cool. 
So I'm just going to go and grab this tracks, see what he's got for us, and we'll take a listen. Uh, once again, that is uh, a frozen track. I'm going to unfreeze it. And I actually want to see what he's do doing in his chain. So we're going to bring up all these plug-in windows and take a look. So 11 MK2 once again, and then essentially a bunch of the 11 FX plugins that come with Pro Tools 12. So he's essentially using just like an 11 rack. Let's take a quick listen to this. <laughs> Very, very cool. Okay, let's check back in with him really quick. Uh, love, uh, love the solo. Thanks much. Okay, cool. So we are in really good shape. So ultimately, we can go, we can select all of our subtracks. And at this point, what we would do is basically do a track bounce, right? So all of my drums, keys, bass, as well as my two mix. I can just select, right click, and say bounce, and it's going to make stems. I can make a compressed MP3 version. I can send to a client, and now we're ready to go. So track collaboration in Pro Tools 12.5 uh, is a tremendous amount of power, but the interface with which that you exchange with other people is very simple. So I have the ability to share tracks with musicians, artists, remixers, uh, people that are anywhere in the world um, over an internet connection. and really about being creative and exchanging ideas with other people. I hope you enjoyed this first look at Avid Cloud Collaboration for Pro Tools. This is a great new feature that will be coming in Pro Tools 12.5. I think it's really going to change the way a lot of us work. And thanks for joining me for Sweetwater Soundcheck. I'm Mitch Gallagher.